So I want to have fun. I really am just tired of not having fun. And I've come to this kind of like aha moment. I was batting around some ideas with a friend of mine that's a photographer. And we were talking about how these two pieces of our lives, where is the need, like the pain point that gets people to that point when they're like, okay, I'm ready to do this. It's time to embody all the work you've been doing. It's time to get the photo shoot and be seen by the world. And we stop ourselves because we're like, oh shit, like I've been doing all these things and now it's time to jump like over the cliff into the fun. What's up, ladies? Welcome back to the Just For Less podcast. Thank you guys so much for being here. You know, this is the spot where we celebrate all things mindset and style because I truly, truly believe style is the key, the missing key to our self-care, our self-love, and our self-respect. So I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. It's our self-love style edit episode. This is truly, truly one of my favorite, favorite episodes um, because it really just reminds me of the origins of the podcast. So if you're new to the podcast or you've been following along, you know how much I love to dump into mindset shifts and self-love and all that stuff. I don't even know if self-love is the fucking right word for it, but all of the things and like challenging thoughts. And that's really what this podcast started as was using mindset shifts, tips and tricks to like get over my mom guilt was how I wanted the podcast to start. So this episode just kind of reminds me and takes me back to those very first episodes where I just shared like whatever was coming up with me and in my life. Um, And obviously the podcast has grown and shifted over time as it came more in alignment with what I wanted to do with my life, uh, my true calling, um, with helping women find themselves through their personal style. But I love always weaving that in. So I am obsessed with these episodes. So first of all, how the fuck is it July? Like, how is this the July episode of our self-love style episode? I can't believe it. I mean, this technically airs on the 28th. I'm recording it like literally days ahead. Um, this is not one of those podcasts that was recorded weeks in advance. Um, anyone who's been following along with me on Instagram knows it's been a shitty week in the Allen household. My daughter got a palate expander in her mouth earlier this week because she has to get braces and um, she has a crossbite not just an overbite and some serious crowding um, with her adult teeth. So we have to get her an expander. And they didn't warn me <laughs> about the expander. They didn't tell me. It just, anyways, I'm going to put that. That's a whole nother episode. Um, and it kind of took us all by storm a little bit and it rocked her world. And she wouldn't eat or drink anything. And she fucking barely wants to eat and drink any way so we kind of went into this just not realizing how much it was going to knock her off of how uncomfortable it was going to make her um and impact her ability to eat and drink i mean i had all the soft foods and different things ready but she just didn't want anything in her mouth period um so she got dehydrated and we had to take her to the ER and we were there and it has just like totally ransacked my week. But it's funny is because I had wrote my notes and my thoughts around what I wanted this podcast to be before all of that happened because I really, really wanted to dive in and share this little experiment I did the week before. And it's really around, you know, I've been talking a lot about manifesting on the podcast, like with stepping into the way we really want to be and the life we want to live with our clothes. And I had Sasha Davis on a couple of weeks ago talking about manifesting. And I'm really leaning into this idea of like feeling good because it makes everything in your life better. And that's really what the basics of manifesting or whether you fucking believe in it or not it's like what goes around comes around it's the golden rule treat others how you want to be treated it's all this shit that everyone's always been saying it's just got a new name for it so i really wanted to lean into that last week and i did and amazing things happen and that's what i really wanted to share with this month's um self-love style edit like things i'm going to lean into this month and how i'm going to use them So this week got really, really off track, but that's okay. I am back. I'm ready to go. I got to be with her, which is 
you know, the blessing in disguise. And one of the things I'm really, really grateful for, and I'm actually going to talk about my new gratitude stuff um, as part of this episode is I'm just grateful that I did get to move all of my client meetings and then have amazing clients who understand and that I didn't have to go to a job or tell my boss why I couldn't be there. And it all worked out and she's doing a lot better. And then I got to take my oldest to get his ears pierced for um, doing really, really good in school and making it through, you know, the last two years of school for them has been really, really rough. And that's the only thing he wanted. And I just remember being a young kid who was into fashion and style and self-expression, most of all, right? And my parents not wanting or appreciating or holding space (laughs) for my desire to just like do all of the fucking things. So when he came to me and said he wanted his ears pierced and he's really good, and he really fucking um, knocks it out of the park in school. I was like, of course, um, if that's the worst thing that we have going on. But little did he know that mama was going to get her ears pierced too. So I got some fun ear piercings. Also, I'll have to post the pictures for you guys. And little secret. So I have holes from when I was a kid. And then I got my second holes when I was like a teenager. And then I took them out whenever it became not cool to have stuck on holes anymore. I don't remember when that was, but there was definitely a moment in my life where it was not cool to have second holes anymore. And um, I haven't had those earrings in for, fuck, probably 15, 20 years. But I popped one of them back in today and it went right in like nothing happened. So anyone wants to get on the ear piercing um, chain gang with me, let's do it. Um, It's made me feel so much more like myself and I'm tapping back into just like all those fun parts of myself. And that's really part of my style journey too. So anyways, super excited about this episode. I'm super excited about this month. I have some really cool guests coming on the podcast. Some of my favorites. I know I say this about everybody, but truly, um, I'm bringing on Chelsea Reif back onto the podcast. She was one of my, fr- definitely in the first 50 episodes I ever did. And we talked about manifesting. And we talked about that a little bit on this episode too, but we just talked about how her coaching business has evolved and just the things that she's been using. But her mindset and the, her approach to business and life and self-care and celebrating herself just fucking resonates with me so much. And she is the one that I was doing a uh, meditation session with when I really started to crack open and find um, the style coaching and really landed on the style coaching business. And, you know, everyone's saying things like, oh my God, you have so much clarity right now. Like anyone who feels like they're stuck in the mud, like I was, sees how much clarity I have right now. And it's really like, ah, I wish I was there. And believe me, I know that fucking feeling. So I share that story on the podcast about how her and I kind of cut through some of that bullshit and helped me get there. And obviously it was a combination of many people and many things, but there's always like that one thing that pushes you over the edge. And our call and time together played a really big role in that. So I share that. And then towards the end of my month, I am bringing on someone that I'm really, really excited about because I think a lot of you guys are really going to resonate with this. And once again, if you have been listening to the pod for any amount of time, and following along at Instagram, you know how passionate I have been about um, cycle syncing. And that's how I got the inspiration to create the style syncing freebie guide on how to sync your style to your cycle. But I've been really passionate about that because I've struggled with it and still working through that. But I started working with a nutritionist a month ago and we implemented some really cool things that have really, really helped to my hormones out. And so I am bringing her on the podcast. She just started her own um, practice doing this, her, I mean, her own business doing this. And she has just been so gracious with me, with her time and like with letting me like show up and I can be as messy and I can say, no, I totally shit the bed this week. And like, there's absolutely no judgment. It's just like, okay, let's just get back on track. How are you feeling? Like when you shit the bed last week, how did that feel for you? Did you feel good inside your body? But it doesn't come. It just, it's a really good experience. And I have thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly fucking enjoyed it. And I've told her multiple times, she does not charge enough because I have enjoyed this experience so much. Um, The, the value has just been incredible and amazing. So if anyone's on the fence around that, um, is wants to use nutrition and a food first approach to balance out their hormones or really any 
thing going on in your body because obviously there's so many different things going on that impact your hormones. I mean, your hormones actually control everything. Um, and I don't just mean like, I'm just going to stop because I really don't know. This is not my expertise. All I know is it's changed my fucking life. So if you're interested in that, that episode is going to be later in the month. So be on the lookout for that. And speaking of cycle syncing and hormones, if you have not downloaded the style syncing um, guide, 18 pages, it's on my website. So you just go to the website and it'll pop up and you can download it. Or you just go to katiejuststyle.com black backslash cannot talk backslash freebie. So katiejuststyle.com backslash freebie. And you can, it'll pop up right there. It's an 18 page guide on how to dress for your mood, essentially. If you're like Katie, fucking cycle thinking, can't get my head around it. Or you have an IUD or maybe you're not there anymore because seriously, like, I'm really sad that I'm just learning and digging cycle syncing now that I'm 40 and I'll be fucking hitting menopause. Um, hopefully not any day, but soon enough. Um, really, it's just, it ties back to the feelings that we're having. So I just took the very traditional feelings that we experience through this cycle, which are all feelings and moods and energies that we experience through our lives. Some of them, you can experience all of them in a day if your weeks have been anything like my last two weeks. So it just taps into the mood and the energy for each phase. So it's, it's about the feeling of when you feel alive or playful or flirty and how you can dress to enhance that. Or when you have that itch, when you feel like, uh, like you're in such a rut and you don't really know how to get out of it. There's some style sinks and some did you knows and favorite lipstick colors for that section. If you're like on fucking fire and you're the queen of fucking everything, like how can you dress to amplify that even more? Or if you're like, nope, I'm ready to go inward, spend some time with myself, and you're in like, get shit done mode. What can you do from a style perspective during that time? I talk about when's the best time to clean out your closet, the best time to go shopping. It's got all the things. I think I'm going to do a little fun podcast series on each of the four and go through the energies and what we're feeling and make like a little mini episode and drop two every week and um just to dig into it more but go download that guide i think it's great it came to me through meditation so it happened really fast and i feel really really good about it because i was in so fucking much in flow so i think that that will come through for you and the energy should be really really good also, I was thinking about doing a workshop on this and getting people together in real life so people can ask their own questions because we all have so many questions around this and it's such a personal experience. So I was thinking about doing a really small group workshop, not recorded or anything like that. Just getting a couple women together who really want to go a little bit deeper. Um, free workshop. I'd love to do that. So if you guys are interested or you know someone who might be interested, hit me up on Insta at Katie Allen Stylist or shoot me an email at Katie B Allen at Gmail. It's that's on the website too. There's a contact form there. And let me know if that's something you're interested in. And I would love to do it. So like always, if you ladies are enjoying the podcast, please rate and review and share it with a friend. I would really, really, really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I'm so grateful to everyone who has supported me along the way. Like podcasting means so much to me. So I really, truly appreciate you guys more than you know. And if you guys do share it or review it or any of the things, tag me or message me on Insta or email me and I will send you a free choose and avoid list based on your body type. So your best choices and on silhouettes that fit your body type, a little quick cheat sheet and tops or pants or styles, I should say, to avoid based on your body type. Um, if anyone's interested, let me know. Again, Katie Allen Stylist on the gram or Katie B. Allen. B as in badass bitch, Allen <laughs> at gmail.com. All right, ladies, let's have some fun. 
Let's step into club. Just realize and get our party on. That's the fucking energy I am on from now on is how can things be fun? How can I be silly? How can I laugh? My New Year's resolution this year was to have fun or the word fun, which I, okay, I didn't really have a New Year's resolution. I picked a word for the year and it was fun. And that's such a core value of mine and something I feel like I have suppressed for so many years checking all the boxes and working for other people. And I really, really want to unleash that and step into that more and more now, which is part of my piercing, which is why I think I'm going to get my tattoo um, covered up or turned into a fucking sleeve. I don't know. Like those things speak to my heart. They're things I've always suppressed and that shit's fun to me. So I want to have fun. I really am just tired of not having fun. And I've come to this kind of like aha moment. I was batting around some ideas with a friend of mine that's a photographer. And our businesses are very similar with it's, you know, I doing clothes, I'm helping women get dressed. She's taking pictures of women, you know, making them look amazing and holding the moment for them. And we were talking about how these two pieces of our lives, where is the need, like the pain point that gets people to that point when they're like, okay, I'm ready to do this. Of course, her and I know, and we know it very well, and we know how it's impacted our lives and how we use these tools for self-care and basically style therapy. But if this isn't something that you've explored or you're not comfortable with, that's not going to be your go-to. And her and I were batting around this idea and talking about it. And I said, you know, what's really come up for me is I work with attract really high energy women who are killing it in life, right? They're meditating, they're journaling, they're showing up for themselves, they're putting themselves first. They're really on this journey to love themselves more and have realized that they're done with the, they have fully embodied, like if you can't pour from an empty cup, right? So they know the importance of all of this and investing in themselves. And then they stop. So this is how I've started to see certain types of businesses and really mine and where it comes in. But I think this is just an amazing analogy for life. And I think this is the inner, why I've been on this energy lately. So we're doing all these things. We're doing all these things. And then it's like, then we get to the edge of the cliff and now it's time to jump and now it's time to have fun. Now it's time to like book a styling session and have some fun. It's time to let someone in your closet and pick out some new clothes for you and really feel good. It's time to embody all the work you've been doing. It's time to get the photo shoot and be seen by the world. And we stop ourselves because we're like, oh shit, like I've been doing all these things and now it's time to jump like over the cliff into the fun and, you know, take this next jump and we stop ourselves. And I'm like, I do it too, right? We're all guilty. Like I've spent all this time, invested money and all these things into really making myself feel amazing. But then when it comes time to like doing that one extra thing that would just be amazing or push me over the edge, I'll like stop myself because you're like, oh, wait, have I done too much? And I really feel this for this idea around women stopping themselves from having just like pure fun and like pure joy in our lives. Like we, I still see amazing, amazing women let themselves get it a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, but just never go all the way in. So that's why I'm really infusing this idea of fun into my business. I really want this experience to be nothing but fun for everybody. I really want to show up and hold space for that. And every part of it, even if it's not working out or there's a size that's wrong or missing, like, let's just have fun with it and see where it goes, right? So that was just something that had came up, but it was really, really funny to me because that was exactly the experiment that I had done on myself the week before was, it was a Tuesday last week and all this shit was kicking up for me. And truth be told, it was probably, we're going to blame it on hormones (laughs) and just shit was kicking up for me. It's actually a combination of things because I knew my daughter was going to have to get this work done. My daughter, um, my son, la, la, la. I really can't talk. My husband has to go back to work after being home for 18 months. It's a really big transition, right? I knew summertime was coming. So I had to refigure out what my schedule looks like. It feels like I just figured out my schedule. So I knew there's a lot of transition in the air. 
combined with the hormones. And it was the last week, right? Before school. And so like a lot of shit was kicking up for me and I just did not feel my best. And I said, you know what, Katie? You know, I've been like talking a lot about manifestation. I have been journaling and meditating, doing all the things and really leaning into the idea of when we feel good, we do attract the life we want, which is why I really feel like everything about my business, I want that experience to be fun for people because I want it to be the last thing we do when we jump over the edge and we're just like jumping into the water and it's just fun taking the plunge, right? I really see that as the perfect metaphor for how I help women is the embodiment piece. Like you're truly embodying the way you want to feel. So I was like, okay, Katie, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I do believe I'm really intuitive. I always have been, and I'm really trying to hone in on it more and more. It just hit me. I was um, journaling and it was like, what if just for today, you literally don't worry. And I mean, truly don't worry about anything. And if uh, nothing, like don't second guess a thought, don't second guess an impulse, nothing, just go for it. And if it doesn't feel good, tell yourself, I'm literally going to worry about it tomorrow. But today for just one day, because you can't say like, I'm just going to not worry about shit anymore. Like that's never really going to work. But I thought for 24 hours or the fucking 12 hours that I'm awake, I'm super intentionally just not going to worry about anything. And whatever feels good to me in that moment, I am just going to do it. Right. So like I dropped my daughter off at school and then I'm coming back into the garage and there's just a spot right in the morning where the sun comes in right outside of her garage. And it's just amazing. And I was like, I got home and I just sat there and I was checking in with some clients and I just was sitting there and my husband comes outside and he's like, well, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm doing a fucking joy experiment today. And for the whole day, I'm not going to worry about anything. So like anything that's going on, I'm not going to talk about it, worry about it. And I'm going to sit here because this space is amazing. And he was like, all right. And he just like pulled up a chair and like didn't even ask a question. And I was like, okay, because literally the energy I was putting off, he couldn't even come at me with like anything, but right. It was really cool. And the whole day I went like that and even to the point, like my son came home and I can't remember what he said, but I thought he said egg roll. And I was like, I want Chinese and we're going to order Chinese and like just anything. Like I'm not going to follow anything. I'm literally going to fucking flush the format for the day and I'm not going to do anything. I didn't have any call schedules a day. I don't do calls or anything. So I did have the freedom in my day to do that. Um, it's usually a day I record my podcast, <laughs> which is probably why I didn't get recorded that week. But anyways, it was the best day. And it was really, really funny as they say, like, you know, put out the energy that you want to get to get back. And that week, things were just like exploding for me. People were reaching out to me that I, you know, maybe I talked to, maybe I hadn't talked to people like were booking sessions, some new ideas that came up for me. You'll learn about those later. I mean, just like so many things that I had been wanting to happen in my business, my personal life, whatever, were just like presenting themselves, like just out of nowhere. It was just so unreal. Like my kids were like, I don't know, their best behavior. Like it was really the best week ever because I took that one day and then that one day rolled into the next day and then the next day rolled into the next day and like everything was easy. And if you know me, you know I'm a pusher, you know I'm an action taker, you know I don't like to just sit and let things happen. I am not good at that. I'm really good at just like barreling through and doing scary shit because I want the result of what it's going to give me more than I want to be scared of it. So it's really hard for me to take a whole day and just like do things that felt good and like not push, push, push and just like you know, if I had talked to somebody about a collaboration or pitched an idea to somebody and like we were brainstorming or something like to just let it be what it was and not push it and to just naturally let it flow. And I was like, holy shit. And the pushing can be internal, external, whatever. Like I am a pusher. So anyways, um, it works, I guess is what I'm trying to say is like when we have fun, it fucking works. So that's really what this whole episode is about is it's about having fun like that's what I want this July self love style edit to be is fun I want everything that we do to be fun even when it's scary so like even when my daughter was in the hospital I'm tried to have fun because I knew it would lighten her mood 
I mean, after I got over the initial, like, emotion, obviously, it was a fucking mess. I mean, true story, I called her wrong doctor's office because I was so freaked out. So when we moved to Williamsburg, we stopped seeing um, her old doctor's office and we switched to a new one. And I was so upset that morning because I knew that she, I knew that we were headed to the ER. Like I knew it before anyone said that that's what I should do. And I accidentally called the wrong doctor's office and they were like, um, we haven't seen her in like four years. And I was like, what? She was just there last week for her eight-year-old birthday. <laughs> Literally, it was like a couple weeks ago. And they're like, uh, no. And I was like, this isn't. And they're like, no. And I was like, oh, this is embarrassing. That's also why you shouldn't panic. Because when you panic, you make bad decisions. But anyways, my point was going to the hospital once things calmed down. Like her and I were playing tic-tac-toe. We were just having fun, telling jokes, watching TV, like it was what it was, right? We couldn't change the situation. But after we had got it under control and we knew what we needed to do next, like we can just have fun. So I am really want to lean into that. I just wanted to share the stories of how the day I just let go and just was like, I'm really going to have fun. Like how things just started taking off and just moving quicker than I could even imagine. And the power of just saying, I'm going to do it for just one day just one day. Like I talked about this when I had brought um, Sasha on the podcast. And I just always remember her saying like, what's the best that can happen? Like we're so wired to worst case scenario, like our brain defaults, like that's how we are made as humans. But it's like, what if we just have fun? What if we just fucking enjoy ourselves? What would happen? So I highly encourage you to experiment with it. Maybe you don't want to do a whole day because a whole day feels really big and scary. And maybe you're navigating something that feels really big and scary. So like when my daughter started getting sick and not eating, I started rolling it back a little bit. And let me tell you, I was not fucking killing this at all. If you were on the live this week with us, then I was very open about not feeling good. But I was trying to get back in that space and continue to raise my vibration. And so I would pick hours or minutes or whatever, and just say, like, for these 10 minutes, I'm just going to sit here, and I'm not going to worry about her, and I'm not going to worry about anything, and, like, just truly do it, and it really did work. So I wanted to share a couple of tips on how I've been making things fun and how it's helped me. Again, I think this comes back to, and maybe you guys aren't like me, but sometimes I literally just don't give myself permission to make things fun, right? Like my son, when he takes a shower, he always plays music. And I remember doing shit like that when I was a teenager. But then as an adult, it was like, okay, take a shower, get dressed, go move to the next thing. And I just never gave myself permission to like enjoy anything. And I think adding music to anything is a really, really good way to have fun because whether I'm taking a shower, thinking about all the shit I got to do next, or I'm taking a shower, listening to music and like dancing, those 15, 20 minutes or however long the showers are are still going to be the same 15 or 20 minutes, but then I can come out of it like feeling completely energized. So adding music to anything, I think is a fantastic way to have fun. And all of these tips are super simple things because I really have learned that lesson that it always comes back to doing super simple things. I tend to think that it doesn't. I love to overcomplicate, but coming back to basics always, always works. So for me, cooking dinner is where I like to add music. And I really like to add the music and just dance a little bit and cook and like just have fun. Dancing is obviously a perfect way to have more fun in your life, especially when no one is looking. I dare you to just like take your hairbrush like we're back in like a 1980s movie and just sing in the mirror for a little bit or dance around your bedroom just do it. You have the two minutes, just do it. Just have fun. The other thing that, especially this pertains right now, because my daughter's been really sick, but it is something I always like to do anyway, is kid stuff. Like I love coloring with her. I always try to color with her, um, board games with her. I'm not the biggest video game fan, but I love a good board game. Uno, any any of that shoots and ladders, whatever. I love an old school board game and I love coloring. Like those two things always reset me and make me feel like I'm really, really, really having fun. And I know that being silly can feel really vulnerable. And I think that's why a lot of women don't do it. And I think that's why a lot of adults just don't do it, right? Because it feels really vulnerable and it's like this fear of being judged. 
So if that's coming up for you, or you're like, Katie, this is fucking stupid. Like, uh, maybe I'm going to stop listening to your podcast. <laughs> like, I'm serious. I just challenge you. I just dare you. Like, just try to have fun. Another thing I love to do, and you knew that I was going to say this, is wear something fun. Like, wear that fun top or that t-shirt that says something funny or a headband. I think headbands are real fun to me. Like, they're just fun. Um, Wear that fun accessory. Like, the 90s are coming back. A lot of us can remember the 90s. Like, that was high school for me. I saw a choker the other day in a store, and I was like, you know what? I should just buy that because that reminds me of high school, which definitely reminds me of fun or just like a time in my life where I was super carefree. I know everyone has different high school experiences and they weren't always fun. Don't get me wrong, but you know what I mean. And then I would say definitely pick a day and just be impulsive. If you have the ability to pick a day like I did and just be fucking impulsive. And I'm not saying you have to go buy a fucking car impulsive. Just be impulsive within your means of having fun, right? Like be impulsive. Like don't make a plan and just see where the day takes you. Or like I said, go color, go dance, go hike. If you want Chinese food, order Chinese food because it's fucking amazing. If you want coffee, then drink the coffee. Like just let it go for just like one day and don't do anything. Go get a piercing and send me a picture. Um, I'm just obsessed with my piercing. I just accidentally hit it when I was recording because you know I'm talking about my hands. Um, just do fun shit. Just whatever's fun for you. Just do that. Okay? And a couple of quotes that I wrote down because you know I'm a big quote freak mantra person. Um, I wrote down, do anything, but let it produce joy. And I was like, oh, it's so good. And the reason that that one's so good to me is because it had the word produce in it. And that's another reason why I don't think a lot of us let ourselves have fun is we're always worried about like producing, right? Like, what did I get done? I got to check off this list. I got to do this. I got to create this content. I got to do that or whatever it is. Like we're always doing, doing, doing. And a lot of us tie our self-worth to how much we're getting done or how much we're doing. And if that's just me, I mean, just let me know. But I'm pretty sure I've talked to a couple of you and you resonate with that. So I love do anything, but let it produce joy because I know that none of us, okay, let me rephrase that. I know a lot of us are not producing joy in the same fashion. So I challenge you. And then I wrote down just myself, um, just uh, because, you know, like that old saying, good things come to those who wait, um, which I do write that one to myself a lot because I can be impatient sometimes. So I did good things come to those who have fun. And that's going to be my new mantra from now on, because waiting's not fun. Being impatient's not fun, but having fun is fun. So good things come to those that have fun. And you know what else is fun for me? Books. Have I mentioned that on the podcast before? <laughs> Just joking. Um, you guys know I love books. I've been asking all of my guests at the end of the episode, like, what are their favorite books? Um, because it's like, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with books. I'm obsessed with beauty products. And I love getting other people's opinion. Um, there's nothing more fun than getting a recommendation from a friend. That's basically how we all make decisions, right? When we don't know something, we typically ask our friends. So I wanted to share some books. And of course, it's the self-love style edit. So that was like a rant. Um, what's the word? I'm, a ramble. I was like, what's the word I'm looking for? That was like a ramble about having fun and the way I see it and the way I see it relating to my business. But really, that's the self-love style work for this month to me is just have fun and like pick a day and see what happens. I really believe that's the embodiment. That's the like attracts like. That's the when you feel good, things come to you and you can't stop attracting things, right? If like attracts like and we're attracting all of our thoughts all the time, then why do we work so hard to not have fun? And let's work harder to have fun or actually just have fun and take away the whole work harder part because that doesn't sound fun at all. So let me get back to the books. So we're going to have some fun. We're going to write down our little mantra of good things come to those who have fun. And books that I've been enjoying um, that are fun are Energy Codes is a new one I've been reading, and it's all about tapping into your energy and how you can leverage that. And I just started it, but it's blowing my mind a little bit, so I wanted to share it. 
there's just a bunch of different exercises in there. And it's a doctor who's her and her dad. She worked for the dad when she was young. I can't remember. I think it's Sue, Dr. Sue Mort- Mortar is the author of the book. I can't remember, but it's Energy Codes. But she's dedicated her life's work to um, energy and helping wom- women, well, anybody, figure out how to raise their vibration because she very much believes in the energy and the vibration of the universe. So it's a really cool book. I'm enjoying it. If you've read it or if you're about to read it, let me know. I'd love to know what parts are your favorite parts. And then the other little gem that I got that I was talking about earlier when I was talking about gratitude is called The Magic. And this is one that came up on an episode. Um, I can't remember who recommended it, but it was definitely a guest recommendation on the um, pod. And it's really just like, it's called The Magic and it's really a gratitude practice. Um and that one's been rocking my world a little bit. And I realize how many things I have to be grateful for. And funny enough, how shit always happens right on time. Uh, you know, as I'm recording this episode, it's the day after Chloe got out of the hospital. And this morning's exercise in my gratitude book was come up with 10 things that you're grateful for, for a hard situation in your life. So it was really right on time. And there are a lot of good things that came out of it, right? I got to spend a lot of time with her. I've watched every Disney movie. Uh, Luca is amazing. It made me cry. (laughs) Raya and the Last Dragon is also really good. It made me cry. I have watched every single Dalmatian movie that has ever been invented. Uh, The original, the remake, and even 102 Dalmatians. A lot of really cool things have come out of it. Um, Even though it's scary as fuck when your kid is sick anytime. Um, but there is gratitude in everything that we go through in life. So if that's something that is resonating with you, I do recommend the book. It's a fun little book um, with stories about gratitude and then gratitude practices. So that's definitely something that you can lean into for self-love for the month of July. And, and one little style tip for you guys. Um, somebody asked me the other day, like, people ask me this all the time, like, what's some style tip that you can share with everyone if they're new to styling? And there's so many different things you can say. But one thing that comes up for me a lot is, and this is the tip, is age truly is nothing but a number. And I do not believe that there's a such thing as dressing for your age. I think we're over that. I think we're past that. If you feel comfortable in it and you feel like it's appropriate for you, then wear it, okay? Whatever makes you feel good. I just don't think there's a such thing as, am I too old for this? Because that's when we really start telling ourselves, and I really believe that's a limiting belief that we buy into that society or somebody else has put on us. Because let me tell you what, my goal in life (laughs) is to be the coolest fucking old person you've ever fucking seen. Like, if you don't follow Betty Winkle on Insta, go look her up. That's my fucking spirit animal. Because fucking life is short, and I really, really want to lean into being fun, and that's my wish for everybody. I'm going to close the podcast with that. So have fun, ladies, and I am so thankful for you for listening to the pod and if you want to ch- um, chat more just reach out to me on instagram at katie allen stylist or shoot me an email at katie b allen at gmail and it's on the website katiejuststyled.com i will talk to you guys later bye